Hi everyone, my name is Karen Highland. I'm a realtor in Frederick, Maryland with the Highland Group. And today our topic is what to do when the lender says no, because sometimes that happens. And with me is my friend Blair Warner, who is a credit counselor. Hi Blair. Hey, how are you doing? Really good, good. I'm glad you could join me today for this topic because it does happen. We've just had a, a couple clients over the last couple of months who did get the word that no, they weren't ready to buy a house yet. So I'm glad we're talking about this. Um, there are several reasons why it happens. Um, most of the time it's because their credit is not what it should be. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, that's that seems to be the number one um, reason and it also seems to be the number one reason that surprises people. Um, you know, if they get turned down for a couple other reasons it doesn't seem to surprise them as much but You'd be you'd be surprised how often people like say, "Oh, I went and applied for a loan, and I thought my score was higher. I thought my score was better." So it seems to be the one that shocks people the most or surprises them. Hmm. Yeah, I would I would believe that because a lot of times people just you know they're not aware, they're not checking their credit all the time. And right. Right. Well, and in mortgage underwriting, they look at more than just scores. They also you know the underwriter is going to look at the, what the items on the credit report. And sometimes their score's high enough, but there's a couple collections on there that underwriting says those collections need to be paid off before we can, you know, approve this loan, even though the scores may be high enough. Okay, good. That's good. Interesting. Um, now, I also know that uh, if a person's self-employed, that they need to have at least two years in the business, and um, they call that seasoned income. Right. Right. So sometimes that happens. Yep. And then also there's the issue with um, DTIs, right? The debt to income ratio? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the um, and that's maybe that's probably the second thing that surprises people is that they they don't know how to calculate debt to income ratio, which is understandable of course. And so when they get ready to apply for a loan they, they come back and they say, Hey, your DTI is forty five percent and it needs to be below 43% say for an FHA loan. And so that does sometimes surprise people that their debt um, to their income ratio is more than 43%. Okay. So in those two uh, main situations, um, give us some tips, you know, for, for buyers, things they can do to help get their debt down and, you know, things they can do to clean up that credit. Yeah, because I mean, the first thing is is don't get discouraged. I mean, that's the first advice I would give to somebody because uh, you know, home ownership is a major purchase. It's a major decision, and if you have to spend two or three months uh, doing a few things to get ready for it, that's that's normal. It actually gives you more time to look for a house to you know make maybe uh, other decisions that are part of you know part of the whole process. So uh, just kind of look at it as a way to step back and go, okay. What do I need to do to get house, you know, ready, mortgage ready, rather than to get all discouraged, you know? Um, and that's just quick little plug: why you should get pre-qualified or pre-approved before you go out and find your dream home, because you'll be more disappointed if you found your dream home already and then you don't, you know, you don't get approved. But a couple things you can do, and they're both related to even if it's debt to income. Like uh, most of the time, the reason the debt to income is too high is because of credit cards. Um, you know, the average person has uh, school, maybe some school loans or a car loan. You can't really change that too much. I mean, if you have a twenty thousand dollar car loan, who wants to write a twenty thousand dollar check just to lower their debt to income ratio? You know, but. Right. It's usually the credit cards and the and the monthly credit card payments that are the easiest to manipulate and pay down, and so you would want to talk to your mortgage person or to someone like myself who could advise you on how to pay those down. That would be the the most strategic way to cause your score to go up and get your debt to income lower, and also not pay so much down that you're dipping into down payment reserves. That was you'd put aside for your down payment because it won't do any good to get your debt to income down uh, ratio low if you now don't have the down payment money you know for the house so it would be good to get some guidance and counsel on that but that's going to have the greatest effect is 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 paying down some credit cards and paying them down strategically in the right way you know 
Right. Uh, you don't want to just pay them all down. All let's say you got three credit cards. You don't want to just pay them all down indiscriminately. There is a, a, a way to do it that's going to have the greatest effect for you. Right. That's very good to know. Very good to know. I think a lot of times people, um, it's not that all these things are complicated, but you know there are strategies. There are strategies to everything you need to you do. So that's good. And it's our and it's our job to share that with home buyers. You know, and once we tell them, they're like, oh, that makes sense. You know, but but it's our job to know all that. You know. Yeah. Right. Well, and and that's why you're a credit expert, and you know most most home buy, home buyers, um, you know, we're not. Yeah. We're not, not really. Um, so the other core, the other core, of course, reason is um, you know the credit is just not what it should be yet, it, right. or even bad credit. So that's a big right. reason. So let's just say that uh, you're going for an FHA loan, and I always use that as the most common example. Of course, there's other loan types, and a good mortgage person will show you two or three options, and not just plug you into one, you know, one possible loan scenario. Um, but let's just use FHA as an example. Usually, most most places require 640. So let's say you go in, you apply for a loan, and you have a 603. You know, then how do you get up 37 points? Or really, you want to have more than 37 points, so you have a, a cushion and not so close on that 640. But how do you get up? How do you raise your score uh, 37 points? And you know, most people, and I wouldn't know this if I wasn't in the credit industry would not know what is the fastest and best way to raise your score. Um, obviously, you could just keep making your payments on time and, and wait a year, and you know it's probably going to go up. But there are ways that we can do it where it's, it's faster. And it may involve, like you said, some actual um, credit repair that's going to deal with some of the derogatories and negatives or past you know, payment histories or errors and mistakes on the credit report. And it would take me a couple hours to go into all the different mm -hmm. things that you can do, but that's what I'm here for. And I will analyze someone's credit report, talk to them about the what, what can be done, counsel them on how they can raise their score or lower their debt so they can have a better debt to income ratio. I'll do all that consultation for free. Yeah. Mm. Nice, nice. You know, I think that um, I've heard there are a lot more mistakes as well that get made on credit scores as well well right than, than there used to be ab absolutely absolutely and it, especially if it's in the, something that was a mistake in the last 12 months because not only do mortgage underwriters look at the last 12 months more than anything and FICO the guys who put out the score also look at the last 12 months more than anything so when we go in there and say how can we make this look better so they can get approved we're going to emphasize the last 12 months or 24 months more than anything Okay. All right. Well, then um, a lot of the steps that people can take, um, if they're looking at 12 months, then um, it's it really won't be long until you can a person can get their scores up. Yeah, I you know if somebody if somebody just needs like let's say for example they're at a 603 and they need a 640 that you know I use that example um, if they're it really doesn't take that long if there's some things that, that that we can that we need to address like some mistakes or some derogatory stuff, uh, or if we need to pay down some of their credit card debt. Uh, that can usually be done in uh, like 90 days or less, and that that may sounds like a long time, but it really isn't when you're talking about one of the most major decisions you're ever going to make. You know. Right. Now, uh, you had mentioned earlier, and um, I totally agree, we've been encouraging buyers a lot more lately, like in the last year, to actually get pre-approved rather mm -hmm. than just pre-qualified. I mean, it really makes a difference. And especially like, um, you know, when uh, there's competition, like we, we have a low inventory now, so we've got a real seller's market, and there's two or three buyers per house. And it really makes a difference when you show up and you've got, you're not only uh, pre-qualified but you're pre-approved you've got that letter so I think that's a really good tip and this may be a topic of another video but uh, maybe you know the difference between pre qual versus being pre-approved is, is, is a big difference yeah yeah it is it is and um, but one of the points you made is you will find out what's in that credit report which you know uh, I, I'm sure a lot of uh, people just um, we know we should but we just you know, don't get around to it. So. Well, I always tell people. I mean, 
you know, if you wake up one morning and you say, you know, and you, you and your significant other decide they want to buy a you want to buy a house, I always tell people the first thing they should do is not necessarily call a realtor. Is they need to look at pull their credit report and know what their credit and debt situation is, uh, because there's things they can do for a few months maybe to make it to improve it before they ever call the realtor uh, or the mortgage person, and that way right. they they lower the chances of hearing that decline, you know, from the mortgage right. person. Or the right. realtor saying, uh, you know, you're not ready yet. So, know yeah. what know what's on your credit report. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. I think that um, approaching real estate, you know, it's it's a mix of uh, planning and preparing, but also emotion. I mean, you don't buy a house that you don't uh, love, but to start out on emotion, you you know, you can really get disappointed. So, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, the emotion comes in later. Try not to try not to start out on emotion. Let that come, you know, further down in the process. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Makes it much easier. So, so what about just really quick? Uh, if we've had this situation happen with our buyers too, they just don't have enough credit. Yeah, what that do do? that does take a little bit longer. That's the one thing that, um, and it makes sense because thirty-five percent of your credit score is your payment history. And so that makes sense that if you don't have enough credit and you now have to add some new credit, that you've got to give enough, let enough time go by that FICO sees a history uh, of good payments. And just making two or three payments on time is not enough history for FICO to say, yep, they know how to handle credit. So if you don't have enough credit, that could be something that's more like six to 12 months down the line before you'll see the effect, the positive effects of that new credit that you've added on. But there are ways that we can do it that will bring the quickest results, but you still got to have, show a payment history on that new credit, and that takes longer. Yeah. Right, right. So great. Good. Credit, are, I think repair, credit repair is more of a quick, quicker fix. I mean, it's, you know, because you're, when, when, once you repair something on a credit report, it's the, the, the result of that repair is going to show up on the next cycle. So that's why. Ah. I, that's why credit repair is, you know, it's quick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. More instant. Yeah. But <laughs> building up new credit, you just got to have long enough for FICO to think that you have a good history. Yeah. Right. Now, and then reducing the debt, that's going to also show up pretty quickly. Yes, and that depends on how much reserve somebody has to a lot to, to the debt reduction. But you are right. Uh, when you reduce the debt, if you send in, let's say you had a eight thousand dollar credit card that was maxed out, and or or, or say seven thousand, you've used seven thousand of an eight thousand dollar credit card, and you just send there a four thousand dollar check in, and reduce that seven thousand down to three, then that's going to show up on the next cycle. So you're right. That's also pretty quick. Right. But as long as you didn't take that four from the amount well, you need, we're down start. payment. Right. Right. <laughs> I told. I totally get it. Yeah, it's um, there's a strategy involved, so nobody should just run out and do something quickly. Right. So, Absolutely. Good. Really good advice. Um, I can't think of anything else. I think you've really covered it. Do you have anything else? No, just to reiterate that you know, don't get discouraged if you have been declined because all they're really saying is when they when you get declined, it's not that you don't deserve a house or that you know, I don't know that you never will you know be able to buy a house they're just saying that right now within certain criteria you don't fit in that box and so all it is is your job my job the mortgage person's job to help them fit in that box so that they'll get approved yeah that's a great that's a great way to look at it i know people just can really get discouraged right so that's very encouraging yeah. Yeah. you're welcome all right well thanks so much blair this has been um Really informative. I hope uh, anybody watching it, you know, get, you've gotten some tips and you've gotten some encouragement to keep at it. Uh, again, my name is Karen Highland with the Highland Group. You can find me at www.frederickrealestateonline.com and Blair Warner with Upgrade My Credit. You can find him also at his website. And uh, what is your phone number, real quick, Blair? Uh, yeah, just might call me on my number 817-886-0302. And my extension is number three. All right, great. And I will have his information underneath the video if you're seeing this on YouTube and underneath the blog post if you found it there. Right. It's been really great talking to you, Blair. Thanks a lot. 
You're welcome. Always enjoy it. All right.